at this point in time, since we don't have any um, uh, performances going on in the Kauffman Center, fundraising is more important than ever. So uh, we're working hard to keep people connected to the ballet and to the arts at a time when it's difficult or impossible to um, be at live performances. So um, that's what I do. Perfect. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you got involved in the arts as a career. So I have always uh, danced from a little toddler on um, through high school and then when I got to college I went to Iowa State and um, they didn't have a dance major but they had a really active um, modern dance club so I took classes and did performances through um, that group and then after college I came to Kansas City and um, I was working on my MBA at UMKC and started taking classes at the conservatory. And um, through that met a lot of people, including um, the founder of Kansas City Ballet, Tatiana Dolkodovska was still teaching at that time. I had the great honor of um, taking class from her and Shirley Weaver, who was her right hand um, in the creation of Kansas City Ballet and the dance division at, at UMKC. So, um, and through my classes, I met a woman who was on the board of the Susan Warden Dancers, which was a, a modern dance company at the time. And Susan had just received a, a choreography fellowship from the NEA, and she was working with uh, composer Jim Moberly, who was on faculty at the conservatory at the time. And they were doing a collaborative project for the uh, Thomas Hart Benton Centennial, which um, the performance was at the Nelson. And through that grant, she was able to hire someone very part-time in an administrative role. And that was me. And so that was my first ever arts administration position. Um, I then went on to, through Susan, one of her former employees, then became the um, executive director of Kansas City Ballet. And so I did an internship with the ballet. Um, and then a couple of years after I um, graduated, they needed someone to assist in marketing. And so I went back to the ballet and I was there for three years uh, doing marketing. Um, left for a time um, and was back at UMKC uh, working for the pharmacy school. And then um, the development position at the ballet opened back up again and they were in the midst of the uh, capital campaign for what is now the Todd Bolander Center for Dance and Creativity, our wonderful home that we've now been in for 10 years, which is hard to believe that building's 10 years old. I still walk in there and I'm amazed that, that it exists. It's a beautiful building, a great reuse of space, um, just, and so many people to thank in making that the ballet's home. So I was there for that campaign. Um, then the conservatory was talking about doing something similar with a downtown campus. And I thought that sounded like a fantastic opportunity. Um, so I, left the ballet, went to the conservatory and worked on that campaign. And uh, that was a very successful campaign. Unfortunately, the um, governor at the time, the legislature was very supportive of the matching money for the building, but the governor vetoed it. Um, shortly after that, he was no longer the governor, but it was um, a done deal by then. So. Um, and then I came back to the ballet actually in fall of 2017. So I've been to the ballet and back, including my internship four times. So um, it's a wonderful place for me to be and um, being involved in the arts has been a great career for me. Um, I've enjoyed it very much. And really, you know, fundraising, you help connect people to their passion. And we have so many wonderful donors who are extremely passionate about ballet and the arts 
and dance in Kansas City Ballet in particular, and to um, help them, you know, connect with that passion and make sure that the ballet continues from what Miss Tanya made it starting out in 1954 to now. It's like night and day, but I know she would be proud of everybody that's involved and where we are today. So um, it's been a wonderful journey. That's a really great. That's such a good story. <laughs> I love that. So speaking of connecting um, the community to the arts, can you talk a little bit about your involvement on the Linux Arts Council? Sure. Um, that's been a lot of fun. Um, so I was appointed to the Lenexa Arts Council, I believe it was in the summer of 2012. Um, and Lenexa is very supportive of the arts, which is terrific. We've got a wonderful mayor and a wonderful city council and, um, and we have wonderful staff support through the Parks and Rec Department. And whenever we come up with an idea, they help make us happen, make it happen. Um, so we're very fortunate in that way. We have, um, when the new Lenox City Center opened, uh, one of the members of the Arts Council was um, really passionate that we would have a lovely gallery within the city hall and um, had some really clear ideas and those have happened. So um, if you haven't been to City Hall at Lenexa, we have rotating gallery exhibits every month. There's a new show um, and it's a wonderful space and a lot of space for both uh, 2D and 3D art. So we're really fortunate to have that. So that came into being um, another, uh, Actually, it was the same um, Arts Council member um, thought it wouldn't it be great to have a, a community orchestra. So uh, three, four years ago, we started doing our research and talking to a number of people in the community who were either already um, leading uh, community orchestras or had been a part of it as to you know when would be a good time and how many people and how should we structure this so um, it ended up that in the summer there's not a lot of you know live music going on in terms of a, an orchestra and organized group like that so we thought that would be a great time so that's what we did because uh, you know students would be home from college music students might be home and it would be a good outlet for them and other people who maybe during the year um, perform with other community orchestras would be able to be a part of this one. And it's been wonderful. So um, we had two full seasons, summer seasons until this summer, um, which it all worked out great. We have a wonderful conductor, uh, Richard Ryan. He's with the Kansas City Symphony. He's a bassist. And um, he came up with this fantastic idea. Let's do a series. He um, asked some folks from the symphony, and also he's also uh, teaches at KU. And he had a series of lectures. So our community orchestra people were able to hear from the music librarian at the symphony, the string um, principals at the symphony some um, com uh, composers. Um, so it was a really great way to keep, we wanted to make sure that our community orchestra people saw the orchestra as a resource for them as well. So it was a really terrific way to keep them involved and um, give something back to the community players who give so much to us on a typical summer. So, um, other things that we've put into play, um, a poetry slam every month. We have a collaborative program with um, the Johnson County Library called City Center Live. Um, of course, it hasn't happened for a while, but we're doing planning for the spring. So fingers crossed that that will happen in the spring. So, um, and we started back up a Sunday afternoon concert series. So we do uh, five or six concerts, May, June, and then we do a few in September. This year, we took the people who were supposed to be playing in 
um, May and June and moved them to, we extended from the end of August into October. And so that was really great. We had more people than ever come see, um, plenty of room to spread out and um, listen to live music and know that you're still safe. So it was a great way to, to pivot on um, what we typically do. I think that's a common word right now. Is, mm -hmm. you know, how do we take what we normally do and make it work for this time? So we've been doing some of that and it's, it's been working well. So yeah. Great. Lots of arts in Lenexa. Yeah, that sounds so exciting. Um, so a piece of very exciting news for Jennifer. This morning, actually, the um, governing board of the Arts Council of Johnson County um, uh, voted to make Jennifer the advisory chair of our board. Thank you. Yeah, so that's really exciting. And um, do you want to talk a little bit about your involvement with the advisory board of the Arts Council of Johnson County? Sure, sure. That's been a great way to sort of, um, I feel like because I work at the ballet in Missouri, and I'm on the Arts Council in Lenexa, I can bring both of those perspectives to the Arts Council of Johnson County um, because there is a lot of art going on in Johnson County, but I think a lot of people aren't really aware of that. They think they have to go, necessarily go into Kansas City in order to see art. And, and there is a lot of data that um, a lot of the audience lives in the county and a lot of the arts organizations are in uh, Kansas City proper. So, but I think there's a way to really um, bridge that. And I'm very excited about the Arts Council's new strategic plan. I know a lot of people don't geek out over strategic plans, but I, I love having a roadmap and um, you know, it sets a path for the Arts Council. And, you know, I think it's important for the Arts Council to have a strong voice, not in only in the region, but also um, for the state. Because we went through some, some really bad years with no um, real Arts Council at the state level. Um, things are much, much better now, and the arts are being m much better supported. And I really feel like the Arts Council of Johnson County can help be um, a voice and maybe even a convener um, for those um, smaller, um, less populated areas of the state. Because with the way, and we've all seen it in the last seven months, how we can be um, connected electronically. And if we have that, you can live anywhere. So then you're gonna to wanna to choose to live somewhere where you have things to do. Um, and so I think that's where the um, Kansas Arts Commission, I know it's a longer name, but I can never remember. Anyway, um, really can play a role in um, providing that backbone of support for artists and arts organizations in the more rural communities in Kansas. Um, because they play a vital role in providing, you know, those outlets for people, um, entertainment for people. And, you know, you may want to live in a rural area, but you're still going to want to do some things. So, you know, an arts festivals and all kinds of things um, are happening and can happen even to a greater degree. So I'm excited about what the Arts Council of Johnson County is doing here in the county. I think um, even through COVID, I think our role has expanded, and I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, is terrific. And so I just am happy to be able to support that. And um, so one of my mandates is to um, grow the advisory board. And so I'm looking forward to connecting with people who are interested in the arts in Johnson County and spreading the word. So. That's so exciting. Um, I am very excited and um, just happy that you are on our board and I am, am ready to see where it goes from here. Um, <clears throat> so kind of going back a little bit, what made you decide to get involved with the Arts Council of Johnson County? Um, 
I think really, you know, knowing that there could be even more done within um, the county in, in terms of um, elevating the profile of the arts in the county, I think um, was important. Um, I, I, I'm not sure people are really aware of the role the county itself plays in supporting the arts. It's um, actually a very strong and supportive county for arts, which um, is great. That's why people love li living in Johnson County. We have a lot of great amenities and they're really well supported. Um, and I think it's important for um, the Arts Council to have many voices on it. And so um, that, that was part of my reason. And I felt like I could bring those multiple perspectives to um, the Arts Council. And, um, and my, my oldest daughter was able to um, participate in Shooting Stars when she was a senior. Um, and she's still, she's a, an opera performance major in her last year of college, which she's doing from home. So <laughs> <laughs> I hear a lot of opera and um, she also teaches. So I hear her, um, I hear a lot of music during the day, which is awesome, so. That's great. Um, so my last question for you today is, what is your most impactful or memorable experience that you've had in the arts? So, yeah, I've been thinking about this. Um, my impactful memory is also a hope. So, um, Kansas City Ballet was supposed to, in May, do a gorgeous ballet called Serenade, choreographed by George Balanchine and music by Tchaikovsky, the Serenade for Strings. Oh, it gives me a little chills just thinking about it because it is um, a beautiful piece of music and the opening to that ballet is stunning. Um, Though it's all women at first, I'm not sure how many, 12, 14 on stage. They're all in light blue leotards with um, long tutus almost to the floor, light blue. And they're all standing in the same pose with one arm down and their other arm up with the hand up. And just with the music and the curtain opening with that vibrant look, it just, um, it's, and the whole ballet is just gorgeous. And so that's my, m one of my most impactful memories. And I wish we had been able to do it in May, but I know we will be doing it at some point. So, um, so that's my memory and my hope. That's very exciting. I look forward to that. That sounds beautiful. Oh, it is. It's amazing. It was the first ballet that George Balanchine did um, in the United States when he moved here and he used um, students. So um, it's funny, there's one part where a, a dancer comes in late to that big group. Well, when he was rehearsing, there was a dancer who was late to rehearsal. <laughs> and so he kept it. So there are all these little quirky things that, that are throughout the ballet. They're not funny, but they just add something mm -hmm. that, you know, most people would not have gone, oh, huh, I kind of like that, you know. But um, yeah, he was, that's why George Balanchine is George Balanchine, because yeah. you know, he's a genius. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with me today. Um, and is there anything else you want to add? Uh, I feel like we've covered quite a bit this afternoon. We yeah, have. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I am very honored to serve on the advisory board of the Arts Council and do what I can do and whatever measure for my own organization, for the Arts Council, and for Lenexa. 
Um, and I just want to thank everyone who is out there who supports the arts, whatever it is. Um, just really appreciate what you do because it's more important than ever right now until we find our way through this pandemic. So um, thanks to everybody out there and thanks Allison and Sarah and everybody with the Arts Council and what you're doing to keep it all going. So. We're so excited to have you on our board. Um, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, next week we will have another creative conversation in the morning. Um, so stay tuned for that. And thank you again, Jennifer. We will go ahead and close it out today. Okay, I think I stopped it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you again so much. Thanks. That was such a great story. I actually um, was a dancer for 13 years of my life. Um, um. Anything like professional, you know, like high level, but it was so fun and it was just a really good- It just gets into you. Yeah, it was really good part of my life, so. <laughs> nice, good. Yeah, you know, and, and most people don't make